Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is another beautiful but windy day out here in Spokane. Before we get started, I wanted to ask if any of you out there would be interested in having me do a live chat. I think it'd be fun to interact with you guys and answer some questions, but I'm not sure if I log on if any of you are actually going to show up. So in the comments below, let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. Now let's get to this forklift. All right, getting ready to load up the uh, forklift with the help of the excavator onto our little trailer here, powered by our Dodge. Let's see how it goes. The end of Austin. This is how Austin goes. <laughs> I never said it was a good idea. So he's gonna lift up the back end of this wall. So you're you're gonna be hopefully sitting level the whole way up those ramps, and you it won't take as much power for you to go because he's gonna actually kind of be pushing you. But you'll you'll just try to help him more than he's helping you. And if anything goes wrong, hold on and pray. We we've we've known him for now at least two <laughs> minutes, so we trust him with our lives. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea. I, I felt sorry for you. <laughs> so Gavin picked up something cool. What'd you pick up, Gavin? A magnet so I can pick up other stuff. just not be on it yeah I don't see any reason for you to be on it I don't think I'm doing anything except risking everything yeah let's just stand back yeah it's like way high on the right side <laughs> it's, it's only gonna go down from now ready yeah watch your forklift fall over I was supposed to be in there. That's funny. That was, of all the options, that was not one I saw coming. <laughs> All right guys, what we have here is a Heister YE40 forklift. I'm not sure what year it is. I should be able to decode the serial number and figure it out. Uh, the last Heister that I had was an H80C and it was a 1969. This looks about the same era and it does have a four cylinder flathead. So it's definitely on the older side. What's working on it is most of the stuff. The hydraulics go up and down, the side shift tries to move the front cylinder. It's not seized, but it's uh, pretty rusty. So I only moved it just a little bit. The the parking brake surprisingly worked. I just had to tighten it up a little bit. Uh, the brakes are 
operational but not great uh, the gauges here either the fuel gauge doesn't work or it's totally empty but the other ones all appear to be working all right so what's the plan for this thing i am going to need this forklift in order to finish up this pizza truck i'll need it to get the box off the back to get the shipping container on the back and then when the delivery start rolling in especially that wood fired pizza oven i'm going to need it to unload it off of the trucks and then to get it onto the shipping container so right now although everything works it's not super reliable i need to make sure that i get the side shift working just fine i'm probably going to end up replacing almost every one of these hoses just because the last thing I need is to have one of those burst while I'm trying to lift something and then on the tires here the one on the right is holding air okay the one on the left is completely flat and I am basically unable to steer this thing because it keeps trying to twist on that one flat tire so first things first let's get this tire situation figured out and then i'll go through all the fluids and see if i can get it running as reliable as possible and then i'll start to remove the hoses one by one and get replacements made all right guys i think i've got the rear axle removal figured out before i show you what i think i'm supposed to do i wanted to show you guys the fluids this here is the hydraulic fluid. It's a little bit low, but it is awfully clean. A lot better than my last forklift, if you remember that one. This is the engine oil. It is awfully dirty, but at least the level is nice and it has adequate oil pressure. So I will be sending out the engine oil uh, out for analysis to Blackstone just to see what it's looking like, but at least the fluids are looking pretty good. As far as this rear axle goes, I don't have the manual for this yet, so I don't know how any of this really works. So this is just kind of a hunch. I'm sure if you work on forklifts, you'll be screaming at me right now. But basically, that is the axle. I've got the tires straight right now. And so you've got that little service port. I believe that I need to get in there right on the right side. You'll see like a spindle nut. I think I need to loosen that. And then I'll come in from this side and basically tighten that axle, which will loosen it from this end and then I believe there's just a spacer on here. So it should be like bearing, bearing, spacer, bearing, bearing, lock nut. Remove the lock nut, and then I'll turn the entire mechanism like this, and then I should be able to slide the axle right out, and then both of these tires should come out. I have absolutely no idea if that's right, but that's what I'm gonna try. So it didn't make a lot of sense to me that this retaining ring was going to have to be removed on the vehicle because obviously you don't have a lot of room to access it. What I got wrong was that what I thought was unscrewing the axle to allow it to slide out of the hole on the right side was actually like a retainer that holds the axle in. So you'll see in a minute I figure out the uh, correct way to do it. So as I'm unscrewing this, I'm realizing that it's actually loosening the axle and the axle is going to drop out in one piece, just like that. And here's the universal sound for I was wrong. Hmm. And this is when I should have removed the retaining ring. All right, I headed out to Les Schwab and got a new inner tube. I wasn't able to track down a new rim protector because the, they told me that these come with the new tires and I'm not gonna be replacing these tires until I'm ready to do a little bit more of a proper restoration on this thing. So the next step is going to be getting the inner tube in there, trying to get the rim protector around it, getting the split rim put back together, get it back on the hub, get the hub back on the axle, get the axle back on the forklift. So let's go.
Guys, I cannot wait to get back this oil sample. Take a look at this. This is the oil filter. It is nasty. Let me show you this in here. This is where the oil filter goes. It is just sludge city down there. Look at that. I mean, absolutely disgusting. Just like a thick, soupy mess. So I'm trying to extract all this out of here. And uh, golly, I don't even know yet. See what I can do. The thing is running great, so I might be able to just get some new oil in there, uh, add some sea foam, let it idle for a minute. Hopefully, that'll thin everything out and get all these gunkies out of the way, and then drain it again and refill it and go from there. Uh, that's the that's the idea right now, but that may change. So that is what I decided to do, uh, fill it up with a cheap oil and some sea foam to try and clean it out. Now this thing probably came with a standard weight 30, but I decided on a 15W40 diesel oil. It'll help in the cold climates and it'll be a little bit thicker when it is up to operating temperature. So I put in four quarts and that left just enough room for half a bottle of sea foam. And then I decided to run it for about 15 minutes, just enough to get it up to operating temperature and hopefully pull out as much of that old oil as possible. I then drained it and filled it up with a Rotella T5 conventional diesel oil while I waited to get the report back from Blackstone. All right, well the test drive around the yard went well. I will say having air in these rear tires makes a huge difference when it comes to steering. Now I was hoping to get these hoses replaced in this episode. I did find a local shop that can make them for me in about a day, but I ran out of time because I was too busy working on this sludgy oil system. Now I do have some good news and bad news on this forklift. The good news, 
I was able to track down a service manual from Amazon of all places that shows me how to do just about everything on this forklift and that will save me a lot of time when it comes to things like removing a rear axle that I have no idea how to do. Now the bad news, I also got back an oil sample report from Blackstone Labs. Let me hop back into the shop and show you guys what we found. All right, Blackstone says, the muddy appearance of this oil is due to coolant contamination. There's a lot of it here based on high potassium and sodium, and it's probably where the water came from too. Coolant causes the oil to oxidize excessively, seen in the very high 4% insolubles value, and fuel dilution is also very excessive at 9.5%. Wear metals are also very high next to averages based on 100 hour oil runs. This 70 year old forklift needs some attention. So if you look here at the level of iron, we are at 3.6 times the universal averages, while our copper is at 9.8 times, and our lead is a whopping 32 times the universal averages. So this engine is going to need some work. So let's head back out to the forklift and come up with a game plan together. Oh, it started raining a little bit. All right, the way I see it, we've got three options. The first option, <sighs> Pull this engine out and do a poor man's rebuild in the shop. Now I'll have to send this head out for machining, but as far as the engine goes, I could do like a cylinder hone with my little dingleberries, change out the piston rings and the main bearings, and that should be able to get me along for a little while. Option number two, see if I can track down a Y112 Continental Flathead engine locally and then just do a full swap. Set this one off to the side, put the other engine in there and hope that it does better than this one. With this engine then on a stand, I could spend a little bit more time and do a proper rebuild on it. Now the third option would be to pull this engine out and put in an entirely different engine in its place. What I'd have to do is convert the bell housing to bolt up to the transmission and then figure out a way to get the clutch to mount up to the engine. And then on this side here, I have a hydraulic pump that is gear driven off the front of the engine and so I need to figure out a way to either replace it with a different hydraulic pump or adapt this one to the front of the engine. That one is probably the most work but it would be pretty interesting. Let me know in the comments below which one of those three ideas you think would be the best. Now we don't need to come up with this decision too quick because this should last me at least a couple of months while I'm working on the shipping container pizza truck and then I can kind of wait until I'm done with that or until it finally poops out on its own to make that decision. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye.